this is Tracy with the Limelight Pet Project, and today we're at Paws Cat City in Seattle with Emily Fowler. And who do we have for adoption today? We have Candy, who's our very special girl. Um, she absolutely loves this brush, and um, she's a little bit of our spicy girl. Um, but if you have brushies and treats, You'll build that trust right up, Ooh. and she will be just such a lovely girl. Hi, baby. <laughs> She's <laughs> sniffing and, and grooming me a little bit right now. So, um, full disclosure, these these chucks that I'm wearing, um, <laughs> one of my cats at home loves these shoes, and so I think she's appreciating his appreciation of my shoes. So, yeah. candy is a great name for her. I, I kind of think of her as maybe a cinnamon candy, sweet mm. and spicy. Yeah. Um, about how old is Candy and how would you describe her personality? So she is 10 and um, her personality, she is looking for the perfect brush attendant to help her out <laughs> because she loves being brushed. She will make biscuits, she will purr, the biggest purr, she's a chatty girl. Hi. Yeah, you're doing so good. I like I like how she's, you know, kind of compact yeah. like a little cat potato. Yes. She has sweet little legs and she's a little tubby. Mm. And she's just absolutely gorgeous. She has um, she's calico, so she has like the splotches of white too, mm -hmm. and she has her little white toes on her front paws. So what would her ideal living situation look like? So she is wanting to be a solo kitty so that she can be the queen of the house. Um, she did come in as a stray, so we don't know um, specifically hi, her history. So we would probably suspect no dogs as well, okay. um, just so that she can be the queen of all the things. Um, she definitely um, would need someone who's a little cat savvy and can read her behavior, but she does give really good signals. Um, so if you brush in the wrong way, which doesn't usually happen that often, she likes to brush pretty much everywhere, but if the brush hit her in the wrong way, she would just do a little hiss and swat and let you know. And then you could take a, take a step back and basically we've just built up this trust over time with working with her. And so she knows that I'm going to respect if right. she doesn't like something. Yeah. Um, and that's a big thing when you've built that respect with a cat that gives really clear signals because yeah. then they know that you're dependable and that yeah. you're not going to do anything that's going to make them Unexpected uncomfortable. Unexpected and scary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So because she wants somebody that's good at, at reading clear signals, um, probably no young children for her. Maybe yeah, we older would, children or teens. Yeah. So, you know, cat savvy teens. Um, and, you know, she's opened up so much with us, mm -hmm. even just in the shelter environment, both down at Linwood and then up here. Um, and so once she kind of is building that trust, mm -hmm. whoever her people are, then she's going to be just such a great companion. And she definitely likes like hanging out companionably near you too. So like yeah. if, um, you know, I've been in here doing brushing for like an hour sometimes and spending some good time with her and then... Um, she'll take herself up and to a perch and just kind of snooze and so she likes to be nearby, likes to know what's going on. Um, yeah. So tell us about this love affair that she has with her brush. When did you guys first discover that she had this yes. epic fascination? <laughs> so we have, you know, a variety of um, tools that we use on the cat behavior team. Um, usually all cats start up at Linwood. And so our cat behavior team will work with them. And she got flagged as being pretty spicy when she first came in. And it is scary, you know, coming in as a stray. It's a lot. This, it's a lot yeah. of changes. Um, and so um, she got her own room, which we call the magic room, mm -hmm. because a room environment gives cats a lot more control. So they can approach you. They can see what's going on. Hi. Um, whereas like in the kennel, it's just a lot more of an approach, no matter what you're doing, mm -hmm. um, which can be more scary for some cats. Um, Look at I know, She's so happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we also use, um, back scratchers that are extendable. Mm -hmm. So that's a great way to, um, start working with a cat who is more spicy, um, just because it's, your hand is still approaching, but it's still a safe distance away, both right. for us. 
um, for being swatted and for them to be like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't smell like you. And so, you know, they're, even though they can be predators Mm -hmm. for small rodents and things, um, they're also prey. And so they're in that middle of Mm -hmm. the food chain. And so if a smell is coming at them, even if it's a friendly smell, but they don't know that yet, um, that can be kind of scary. So yeah. you react. Hi, good girl. Well, and a back scratcher can be something kind of neutral and polite. Exactly. Like, and I'm then kind of approaching your space, but I'm not invading yeah. it. Yeah. And so usually we'll work with cats with the back scratcher, and then we'll like slowly shorten the length while we're working, even in a single session. Um, you can put chiru on the end of it is another good way to kind of just build that trust with hands Mm -hmm. and show her that, you know, we're not going to do something expected and scoop her up, that we're really here to give the lovins. Um, And then we had another kind of circle scratcher, and she did seem to like that, and she was like pulling it towards her, pulling it towards her. Um, And then one of our team members um, grabbed this one, and she was just like all oh, about no. it. Nothing else exists. I no. know. This and it's like perfect too because it has the long handle. Mm-hmm. And so it allows, you know, even new people to interact with her where they're not invading her space too much and she's getting all the brushies. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and so this brush is definitely going home with her. We've already gotten a replacement for future spicy friends who come to be with Aww. us. Um, but yeah, you know, like initially when she came to us, um, even like offering the food bowl, she was mm-hmm. like, I don't know about that, you know, so we worked with her over time and um, now you can like let her lick Chiru right from you. Um, well, and she's giving out such sweet, friendly, happy signals right now. Yeah. And we are, we have to remember that even the best of shelters, it's still a shelter environment. It's not not, not their home yet. Absolutely. So I think she's doing great. Yeah, for sure. And she's actually doing great with the window shades open today. We've been keeping them closed just mm-hmm. because sometimes we're on a such lot. a busy street mm-hmm. that, you know, lots of cars going by. So, you know, in the home environment, she's just going to be able to open up so much more quickly because it'll be so consistent. Um, same sounds, you know, same people coming through because mm-hmm. we do have lots of people coming through and yeah. lots of other kitties. Do you want to grab your brushy? Yeah. Hi, good How would girl. she describe her perfect day other than lots of time spent <laughs> with her brushy? Um, I mean, probably also some snackies. She does. She is a fan of Temptations. She also likes her Chiru. Um, and really, I think she does like being that companionable. Like, you know, like she will come down if she is up here, she'll come down for the brushing. Like, um, you know, some cats might require you to come to them, but I think she likes flopping by my legs, well, which is extra cute. I love her little awkward sploot here. I she's know. got her legs kind of <laughs> Yeah, she's relaxed. Relaxed oh. in the back. Hi. Yeah, she's got a little partial tummy showing. I mean, yeah. This is great. Yeah, and that's a pretty vulnerable position, mm-hmm. and you guys just got here, so. Yeah, she just met me. Um, and I think it helps too, right? Like, we can kind of help them with that transition as mm-hmm. they're meeting new people. Um, I like to think of it like stamping people with approval, being like, look, you know, yeah. like, they're going to respect your space yeah. too. We told them all your rules. <laughs> this is a safe scenario for you. Yeah. So what's Hi. your favorite thing about Candy? Oh, I, I, I. I mean, her love affair with the brush is pretty hard to hard to beat. Um, but I do love that she'll like flop over, like she'll like tubby around and walk around and eat some snacks, but then she'll come over and just flop. And you know, it just shows that she wants to be near. And um, yeah, yeah, she almost seems like a children's book in the making. Hi. Her candy and her brush. Yeah. Hi. You can have all these pictures of candy in all the places that she would take her brush. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have a, a board where we're kind of, you know, communicating with each other about how cats are doing and mm-hmm. what things we find they like and dislike so we can help them. And um, one of our team members will pull together little video clips that we've done. Mm-hmm. But early, early on, he did um, a couple like I want candy and sugar, oh, sugar. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, as we were when she was um, still building trust I, with I, us. I want, I want brushy. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. So she's 10 years old mm-hmm. and other than being a little spicy and needing somebody that can really read her signals and respect her boundaries, 
Um, does she have any behavioral or health issues that are making it harder for her to get adopted? Nope. Um, yeah, she's just waiting for that right person to come on by and meet her. And, you know, for her, we would definitely recommend, you know, if you come by and meet her, you know, you can always put her on hold and come mm -hmm. back the next day. So you can start building that trust and see right. if that connection um, is there. Hi. Oh, and her eyes are so soft right now. I don't yeah. think that it would take long if it was somebody that understood her and just kind of took their time and respected yeah. her. Yeah. And she does have her playful streak too. Um, so sometimes if she hasn't been brushed for a bit, she'll kind of come at it wide-eyed. Yeah. Um, so you can still do some, some brushing, but then we'll do a little wand toy too. Mm. Um, which she's very good at catching. Oh, Hi, good So girl. if somebody sees this segment and they think they have the perfect home for sweet and spicy candy, how do they reach out to Paws Cat City? So you can give us a call anytime. Um, we're not appointment based, so you can come by anytime that we're open. Hi. We're open um, every day except Mondays. So on the weekdays, we're open 12 to 6 and on the weekends, 11 to 5. Um, and you're welcome to give us a call just to chat about her more, see, you know, tell us about you, let us know, uh, or you can swing on down, <laughs> but she'll be here waiting to meet you. Awesome. And she's just started giving me a few slow blinks. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah. So Candy, here's to hoping somebody sees your segment and they fall in love. Are you going to give a really good angle of yourself here? Oh yeah. Big stretch. This has been Tracy with the Limelight Pet Project. We shine the light on harder to adopt pets because their stories are worth telling.